Kia ora tato, and uh, welcome back to the COP26 climate negotiations in Glasgow for this, the third of my four reports to you members of the Sustainable Business Council and the Climate Leaders Coalition. I'm sitting here at the central intersection of the vast COP campus through which many of the almost 40,000 delegates stream through each day. I'm recording this at eight o'clock in the evening when the flow of people um, has diminished quite a lot, although there's still an awful lot going on in the negotiating rooms. Um, and um, because the, we're in the intense last two and a bit days left before the midnight Friday deadline um, for COPs um, closing. This intersection is actually where it all comes together because running this way is the main concourse through which, um, uh, through the totally enclosed campus of permanent and temporary buildings. Um, a, at least a brisk 15 minute walk from end to end, um, from uh, uh, east to west. It's basically politicians that way uh, in country office and, and this way in civil society in the vast spread of pavilions, exhibitions and m meeting rooms back that way. And here the concourse intersects uh, this way um, and um, with another major thoroughfare. And this one has the main plenary meeting rooms that way. Um, one is big enough to seat a small group of delegates from each country in the world, 194 here, plus some observers and lots of media, and a somewhat smaller plenary room. And then in the opposite direction uh, is a vast rabbit warren of negotiating rooms. And if you go past that, there's an enormous cafeteria for staff, which I managed to sneak into uh, um, uh, at one point uh, to try to catch up with someone. Now we know some good decisions will be made here at COP, um, but likely are nowhere near enough to put humanity on a plausible path to net zero emissions and thus a more manageable temperature rise of only 1.5 degrees centigrade. And it's on this main thoroughfare um, that, um, or, um, that brings together so many of these people. But of course, none of these people can act or survive on their own. Each has their indispensable role to play in society. So the utterly vital challenge um, is to get them all working better together for each other, for the sake of their nations, and then all nations collectively for the sake of the planet. You'll hear some more of that uh, from David Benatar, the Chief Sustainability Officer of the Warehouse, who is here at COP26. I interviewed uh, David earlier today, and I hope you enjoy our accompanying video. It's very clear here at COP that leading businesses across almost all sectors have become in recent years a great deal more sophisticated, capable and ambitious about their climate amp responses and are rapidly building alliances with all sorts of other um, parties, not just in their own sector, uh, but widely across civil society um, to um, bring those into effect and also then to scale up their ambitions. One particular example um, came on Saturday, which was the announcement from the five largest UK supermarket groups that their goal is to reduce the uh, negative environmental impact of the contents of their consumer's typical shopping basket by 50% by 2030. And, very notably, they're working with the wild World Wildlife Fund on all the measures they will need to achieve that and to report on it with a lot of transparency. To do all that, of course, will mean they will work very closely with all the companies in their supply chains, from the very largest um, to the smallest over time. That understanding of the power of business ecosystems and the constructive roles every one of them can play uh, or the members can play is a very crucial that and that understanding it's a very crucial driver of sustainability in all its dimensions um, is one fundamental to what's going on here um, and I hope that this is just a tip of an iceberg around the world. Now while we'll hear plenty from business in the next two and a bit la last days of COP all the focus inevitably be on the work of um, politicians and civil servants from country delegations trying to reach agreement on the big breakthroughs. Now, in the final statements from COP, 
uh, likely, as I say, on the early hours of Saturday morning. And um, some of the headlines inevitably will be disappointing on, for example, um, the scale of countries' pledges on emission reductions. But I think it's really important to take the final agreement um, um, in its entirety and take a bit of time to work out um, what all the new commitments, what the reinforced commitments, uh, what the new ambitions are to get a true um, picture of COP. So I'll be trying to uh, do that, and I look forward um, to bringing news of that in my fourth and final report from you uh, just after, as, as COP26 is closing. Until then, matiwa.